French papers, we're going to have a look at uh, them now. Lots of focus, in fact, on the uh, former president, Nicolas Sarkozy. One of his former advisers, Patrick Buisson, is set to publish a tell-all book today. He seems to be... Um, Settling scores with his former boss, doesn't That's he? That's uh, right. Like... <laughs> now, the name Patrick Buisson uh, might ring a bell. He's uh, been quite a lot in the in the French papers mm. uh, following uh, the end of Nicolas Sarkozy's presidency because it turns out that while he was a top advisor to Sarkozy at the Elysee Palace, he was recording conversations with mm -hmm. the president. Now he's going to publish this tell-all book that Libération says could be very embarrassing for a Nicolas Sarkozy. Mm. After all, what happens behind closed doors, you don't necessarily want everyone no, <laughs> to know about. <laughs> uh, and inside the book, according to Libération, it shows Sarkozy's hidden side and the fact that there's a major gap between what he says and how he really is. And the timing of this, uh, this uh, tell-all book isn't innocent. The clear aim is to hurt Sarkozy two months before that crucial primary at Les Républicains. If we go back to the front page of uh, Libération, uh, you can see uh, that they're talking about uh, Sarkozy's friends, his ongoing cases, and his, uh, his bothers. You mm -hmm. can see it there. Ses amis, ses affaires. Ses emmerdes, that actually is a play on words of the very popular Charles Aznavour song. But you can see there Sarkozy looking quite dark and brooding because this could hurt him. Mm, paper's kind of wondering how much um, further Nicolas uh, Sarkozy's image could be tarnished. I mean, uh, he's already facing legal trouble, isn't he, on several different fronts. That's right. And you saw a sneak peek at Libération's editorial today that says, look, Sarkozy, it's clear what he's going to do. He's going to say that it's the system uh, that's out to get him. He's going to say that he's the victim of biased judges. But it's really quite troubling uh, when you look at the accumulation of accusations against him. And he's accused of some pretty serious things. Corruption, influence peddling. The list is long. Now, of course, Sarkozy is innocent until proven guilty. That's what Liberation says. But French people really deserve a serious explanation uh, instead of shrouding everything in mystery and pretending to be a victim, which is Sarkozy's current strategy. Well, one of the cases that Sarkozy is actually under investigation for involves allegations that his successful uh, 2007 election campaign received illicit funding from the then Libyan leader, Muammar Gaddafi. And that's right. This is quite a juicy detail that a lot of papers have been uh, focusing on. There are new revelations today in Mediapart. Mediapart is the investigative website that has been instrumental in leaking information about this case. Now, today... Mediapart says that the former Libyan petrol minister, Shukri Ranem, who was found dead in the Danube in April 2012, well, this former petrol minister uh, allegedly left a notebook behind that's currently being investigated. Now, what was in this notebook? You can get more uh, details here about uh, these uh, millions, that's what they're talking about, millions that are resurfacing. According to Mediapart, this former petrol minister jotted everything down while he was minister. And he, allegedly, uh, in April 2007, he talked about a series of three money transfers worth 6.5 million euros. And who were they for? Well, as you hmm. can imagine, they were for Nicolas Sarkozy's campaign, according to Mediapart. Ooh, possibly lots of scandal <laughs> going on in French politics at the moment. Of course, Sarkozy hoping uh, to be president again. Papers wondering, though, if these legal obstacles, potentially this book as well, I suppose, won't make him uh, trip and fall even before he gets to the finish line. That's though. right. That's what Lizzie Coup, the business paper, wonders in their editorial. And they kind of joke. They say, you know, some days it's not easy being a target. The, the, the truth of the matter is, all this is really playing into Nicolas Sarkozy's rivals. There are a lot of people who are hoping to beat him uh, in that primary in November to be the candidate for Les Républicains, uh, and chief among them, Alain Juppé. Alain Juppé is his main rival. Uh, and Les Echos says these days, Alain Juppé doesn't really have to do anything or say anything. All the, all the thunder is on Sarkozy naturally. And you can see that this is actually paying off in the polls. This is the front page of Le Figaro today, which has carried out a poll wondering what would happen if the primary were held today for Les Républicains. And you can see there, according to the results, Juppé would get 39% of the vote, Sarkozy would get 33%. Now, what's interesting is how those polls have changed, though. Uh, you can see maybe uh, just under Juppé's score, 39%. Plus five. Essentially, he's jumped five points, whereas Sarkozy has, has gone down one point. So it seems like that gap between them is getting bigger.
OK, well, let's stay with French politics. Uh, Le Parisien exploring the situation on the other side. Talking about the left here, uh, that's not a pretty picture either. That's right. According to uh, Le Parisien, it's pretty rough these days being an elected official uh, from the Socialist Party. Dur, dur d'être député socialiste. Uh, the government's bad image is essentially washing off on MPs. Uh, who have, of course, they have to face their constituents back at home. And according to Aujourd'hui en France, Le Parisien, people back at home are not happy with the government, and this is washing off on to their MPs. In fact, many socialist MPs say it's so bad that they actually fear for their future in the next legislative election, which is going to be held in 2017. Uh, to quote one of them, says that if our candidate, so if the socialist candidate doesn't make it to round two of the presidential election, it's going to be a bloodbath in the legislative elections that are held right afterwards. Uh, and another one says that people are so fed up that they're actually not even listening to their elected officials. Uh, he says, you know, when you try to speak to people, they tell you, don't waste your time. It really hurts. He says he'd rather have people yell at him than face a deafening silence. Mm, those elected officials, um, many papers saying now they're, they're kind of paying the price for internal party divisions, for high unemployment, and also uh, just generally the government's chaotic policies. Really. That's right. A lot of people say that the government's track record hasn't been great when it comes to uh, the French economy. L'Humanité, the communist paper, is focusing on one aspect of that in particular, and that is the government's industrial policies over Hollande's presidency. You can see here that pretty striking figure, 887 factories have closed since 2012. You can see this uh, cartoon here, François Hollande bowling, but it's not bowling pins, it's actually factories that he's knocking down. Uh, and uh, according to L'Humanité, we're talking about an industrial defeat or even a walloping. And now, not only have factories closed, wages have been cut for those who are lucky enough to keep their jobs. It's a pretty uh, ugly picture, and maybe that can explain why people are so angry at their socialist uh, elected officials. Okay, Flo, thank you very much. Flo, summing up the papers set for us here in France.